Maybe this is a review, maybe it's not. But I'm going to show you all the steps you need to calculate the electric field due to multiple charges using Python. And it's really, it's really useful to do it in Python. If you're not doing it in Python, it's possible, but it can get really tedious, and no one likes to be tedious. So let's just get started. Imagine that I have a single charge right here, a charge, let's call it Q1 for right now. And it's located at a vector position R1. That could be anything. It could be anywhere in the XYZ coordinate system. Now I want to find uh, the electric field at this location over here, and I'm going to call that the observation location, and that has a vector location R O. Well, how do I find the electric field? Of course, you know that it should be pointed this way, E. It's a vector, E, and I need to find that, but the first thing I need to do is to find this dis vector from here to there, and, and I'm going to call that, let's just call that R for now. So if I know R, then I can find the value of the electric field. E is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 over the magnitude of R squared R hat. And that's important because this is a vector version of the electric field. You need that R hat. R hat is a unit vector pointing in the direction of R that has a magnitude of 1. So remember to find the unit vector, any unit vector, R hat is the vector R divided by the magnitude of R. Okay, let's do some other things really quick because we're pretty much done. Um, let's review how do you find the magnitude of a vector. So let's say I have the vector R is Rx in the x component, Ry, Rz. It has x, y, and z components, and we can represent this as a, as a pair, I mean a triplet, right? And this angle bracket is a notation that we use in some physics courses. You could, of course, write this as Rx x hat plus Ry y hat plus rz z hat but that takes up a lot more space if we do this this is better now if i want if i have that vector and i want to find the magnitude the magnitude of the vector r is going to be the square root of rx squared plus ry squared that's a y squared plus rz squared so those are just scalar numbers so i can just add those up and find them and that would be a positive value and we're going to do that and then if i want to find uh the unit vector r hat r hat would just be that number divided by uh, the vector. So if you wrote it out, you could write it as rx divided by the magnitude of r, ry divided by the magnitude of r, and rz divided by the magnitude of r. And I know that's a lot of work, but we have to do that. So here's the steps that we're going to do. Number one, um, once we know r1 and r0, it's find r. Find r. And then we're going to need to find our magnitude, and then we're going to need to find our hat. And then we can plug it all in there. Oh, and I guess you should, I mean, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Okay, now you can imagine that that's a lot of work, right? Doing all this stuff, finding these vectors, finding that vector, finding that vector. Oh, how do you find R? I didn't even say that. R is equal to R O minus R one, right? Because it's the difference. So then I need to find that, to find that, to find that, and that's my first step. It's a lot of stuff. You can do it, but you know you got a lot of calculations to do on your calculator, and it's better to use, simpler to use Python as your calculator. So I'm going to show you how to use Python as your calculator. I'm not going to skip any steps. I'm going to go through all the steps. Let's switch over here to the computer. Hello, computer. And I like, you can use a lot of different versions of Python. But the one thing that we're going to need is what's called Web vPython or vPython. And you can do it in a web page. And so this is the web page that I like to use. It's trinket.io. Um, so if you go here and I'm logged in, you can see I'm logged in, then I can create a, a Web vPython calculation. And you can save it and then you can reuse it if you're logged in. So the first thing I'm going to do, and the, the page is a little, I, I zoomed in a little bit so you can see the, the important parts. But if I zoom over here and I click on my name, I'm going to go to New Trinket. And then I don't want to do Python. That's Python 2. I don't want to do Python 3. It doesn't have the vector stuff in there, and you need to pay paid account to save. I want to go down here to Web vPython. 
Now, it's going to give me the option of uh, Python or blocks. So you can do all your calculations by dragging these blocks around. I mean, it's kind of cool, but don't do that. Okay, so we're going to click on Python. Now we have a Python window. And uh, I'm going to zoom in a second, but in general, I'm going to go through all the steps. You don't need to know anything about Python. But it is a great calcul best calculator in the world. Um, you could do things right here. I'm just going to say print one and r press play and then I get the output over here. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see a lot better and then you won't see that output window. So let's zoom in, make this in bigger nated. Let's see if that looks good. Bigger. I like it really big so that you can easily see what's going on. Okay. So don't worry. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Python from the beginning. So maybe this is a review. That's cool. Maybe it's not. That's cool too. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we can do is to create a variable. I'm going to call I'm going to call this variable a and it's equal to two. And then I can print uh, a, and then I can run that. So if you've done programming in other languages, oh, you can't even see that. Let me scoot this over a little bit. There, that's good. Um, if you've done programming in other languages, you need to declare the type of variable it is. But Python's like, well, you, ty you typed an integer, so I'm just going to make it an integer. Is that okay? It's just going to kind of figure it out. And I'm cool with that. We're going to work together. Python and us are going to work together and make things better. Uh, so that's a variable. I can make another variable, uh, b equals negative 3.32. That's fine. And then I'm going to print a times b. And there you go. That's working right there. Or I could say this. I could say C equals A times B and then print C. So we can do just really basic calculations. I'm going to show you all the important ones. Um, <clears throat> let's do let, one of the things that is useful. I could, I, I could print something to make it look cooler. C in quotes equals quote comma C. Okay. And then I can print that and it will make it look nice. And if you want to put units, I can put comma, unit, whatever they may be. Now, one of the things that you don't want to do is to put the units in the number because we're, Python's a calculator, right? You don't put the numbers in your calculator. You, the human, are in charge of the units. So that's your basic, basic, basic version of, of Python calculations. And what's really great right here, if you, if you create this program for a calculation, that's a simple equation. But if it was complicated, uh, then I could change this number two to four and just rerun it. I don't have to redo all the calculations, right? It just, it just did it. So I, that's a great thing. I'm dealing with the symbolic version and plugging in the numbers, and Python does the number stuff. That's good. Okay, now let's deal with vectors. I'm going to delete all that stuff. Let's deal, make a vector. A equals vector one, two, three. And I'm going to print A equals A. And here, if you do not have WebVPython, this will not work, right? Because the vector is a class in Python, WebVPython. But it printed out as a vector. Uh, some other operations I can do, I can add vectors. B equals vector uh, 4, 5, 6. And then I can say C equals ve uh, A plus B. And now I'm going to print C. And it added those two vectors, as you would add vectors, which is really cool. Now watch this, just for, for clarity. Let's say D equals 3. A plus C, B plus D. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run that. Nothing happened. Oh, wait. Scroll down here. There's an error. You can't add a scalar and a vector. It can't do the impossible, right? Scalars and vectors are different things. You can't add them together. So Python's like, well, don't do that. And I didn't. Okay, so you can't. That's good. I could multiply it. I could say this. Uh, D times. You can multiply a scalar and a vector. So I'm going to add those two, multiply by D, and then there I get that. So that's that. Uh, now a couple other important things about vectors. You can add them. You can subtract them. What about the magnitude? Let's say I have the vector C right there, and I want to find the magnitude. Uh, let's get rid of that D. I don't want that D there. So let's find the magnitude. So I could do something like this. C mag equals, uh, oh, let's do this. Print uh, CX equals C dot X. Since it's a vector, I can just print out the X component. I could just deal with the X component. And that gives me just the X component right there. So uh, because it's a vector. 
So I could use this to find the magnitude, C mag, is gonna be equal to the square root, that's square root in Python, C dot X squared. Squared in Python is star star, not hat. Um, so cubed is star star three, plus C dot Y squared, plus C dot Z squared. And let's print that. And I'll write it nice. I'll look like this C magnitude equals C mag. And it would have units too, but I don't know what they are because it's made of things. So it works. Now, but there's another way to find the magnitude. I could do this, print C equals, oh, parentheses, oh, quote, comma, mag C. So mag is a built-in function in Python, and if I give it a vector, it returns the magnitude of that vector. So those two gave me the exact same thing. So I don't have to do the manual part of that. And the same thing's true for unit vectors. So I could calculate the unit vector C hat as uh, the vector C divided by C mag, print, that looks like chat, huh? C hat equals C hat. And I get a unit vector. If you take the magnitude, that is one, you could check. Uh, or I could do it manually, I mean, do it automatically, print C hat equals uh, norm, comma, norm c. So norm is a, is a function in Python that returns a unit vector in the direction of that vector. So it does it automatically. So we don't have to do that. Okay, I think we are ready to begin our calculation. So let's, let's do some, some good here. The first thing I'm going to do is to say k is 9 times 10 to the ninth. I'm going to put here uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught because that's what that is. But I didn't want to write out that thing, so I just called it K. And that's very common to do. Uh, so you can use, make a comment with an, uh, a number sign, or as some people say, hashtag. Uh, and then everything after that in the line is ignored by the Python. So there's K. Now the other thing I need is to know my charge, my location of my charge, and my observation location. So I'm just gonna make up stuff. Q1 equals um, three nanocoulombs. So three E negative nine. I'm just picking something. R1 the, is going to be the vector, uh, the location of charge 1. And it's the vector, I'm trying to make up stuff. It's hard to make up stuff. 0 0.01, uh, negative 0 0.03, 0 0.02. That's made it up. Okay. Now the final thing I need to know is the where do I want to find the electric field? RO is vector... Um, 0 0.03, 0 0.020. 0. It's making up stuff here. Okay, we're ready to go. The first thing I need to do is to calculate R. R equals RO minus R1. I don't even need to print it. You could print it if you want, but you don't even need to print it, right? Python knows what it is, and that's all that matters. Now I need to find R hat. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I need to find R mag. I'm going to say R mag is equal to mag r, and then I'm going to find the r hat. r hat is norm r. That's it. Now I just plug in everything to my equation. E equals k times q1 times r hat divided by uh, mag r mag squared. That's the equation for the electric field due to a point charge. I'm going to print that. E equals E newtons per coulomb. And there's my electric field. Boom. And it's so great, right? Because I can, I can put in any values for uh, these three things right here, and it will, it will calculate it. Done. Easy. It's that easy. Um, and so you don't have to worry about finding all that magnitude and stuff like that. Because uh, Python's doing it. You just have to enter the vectors. It's important to understand what it's doing, but you don't want to do all that tedious work. That's what computers are for. They are here to do the tedious work for us. Uh, let's do this a slightly different way because I don't actually have to do this. I don't have to make these separate variables. I can just put those variables right in my equation. So let's just, I'm gonna delete it. E equals K times Q1 times norm R divided by mag R squared. It's gonna give me the same thing. But I didn't have to do those extra steps. I can do those steps in the equation. Now, what if I have 
two charges. What if I want to find an electric field due to two charges? Well, it's the same thing. Uh, now, I'm not even going to write this as a function. I'm just going to copy the code. Okay, let's just copy the code. One thing I'm going to do is call this E1, just because it's electric field due to charge one. Now let's say that I have another charge. So I'm going to copy all this, Control C, and paste it. And I'm going to make new charges, Q2. And it's hard to come up with random numbers, so I'm going to say negative three. Let's make this uh, two, one, negative. And let's put, oh, the observation location, I want the same, right? I don't want to have two different electric fields. I want to find the, the total electric field at that observation location. Uh, so I'm just going to go down here and change this to, oh, that needs to be R2, um, E2, Q2, R, that's fine. So you'll notice here that I redid R. That's fine, right? So up here I calculated R and I calculated E1. Now I gave a new Q2, a new, no, the R2, uh, a new R2, that should be R2. I recalculate R. Python doesn't care, right? It's fine. Change the value of that. That's fine. It's not going to change the E1. e one still E1 of this. Let's print out E1. Print E1 equals E1, Newtons per Coulomb. Um, and then it's going to calculate that, get E2. It redid R, so we have a new new E2. And then let's print out the total electric field. Print, yeah, well, you can calculate it too. Let's do this. E equals E1 plus E2. Notice those are vectors, so it's adding them as vectors. Yay. And then I can print that. E equals E1. No, I can say E. Newtons per Coulomb run and I got an error unexpected punctuation I can fix that e1 where's the unexpected punctuation r1 q1 vector r2 e2 let's see unexpected e1 token name punctuation line 10 Oh, okay. I put the comma in the wrong place. Line 10. I didn't put the comma right there. There you go. Boom! It's so useful and powerful. I mean, you still need to know what you're doing. It's not like you're just cheating and getting chat GPT to calculate the electric field, because it'll probably do it wrong anyway. Um, but you've built a calculator that you can use to do stuff for yourself. If you know what's going on, you're just having the Python do the tedious parts. So that's that. Okay, so hopefully you, you get more comfortable using Python. Um, you can do this on your phone. It does work on your phone. I don't like to do that because I can't see. You could also do uh, glowscript.org. It's the same thing. It's just a little bit different. You do have to sign in to use this, and then you can create a program. It looks a little bit different. You can use something like Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but then you're going to have to install the vPython module and import the vPython module. But all those three options are really the same thing. Um, the Jupyter Notebook is a little bit better because you can use other modules too, but they don't always get along with vPython. So I, I just like to use vPython on Trinket.io. You can save your code. You can name it. It's all great. And that's that. Hope you find that useful.